Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like me. And if not, you guys better be manifesting, planning, and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you all for sure. If this is your first, second, or third time to Difference World, welcome, happy to have you guys. Definitely before you leave, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? And speaking of learning about your girl, for those that may need to know, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and CEO of my own business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain you guys all at once so again welcome to difference world and my youtube channel of course definitely hit the subscribe button before you guys leave uh what's today you guys tuesday taco tuesday yay go get some tacos after this <laughs> so uh but to do, on tuesdays we do our social awareness content and so this one is going to be a little um intertwined with black history month you know it's the last full week of black history so we got to represent we only get 28 days to do so <laughs> so every day we got to go all out but um so this one is going to be a curated a collection from my last year's uh, vlog of four um, of uh, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Uh, the book was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking and consistent conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, you guys, please be advised that this is sensitive content. It's intended for a mature audience. And so I do have a warning uh, clip before I show the video. Um, but in essence of, you know, what I'm showing you guys is it's basically what my book talks about. It's a race role reversal, asking the questions, what if this was you and your people instead of ours? And, you know, what if this was still happening to you and your people instead of ours? And so um, before I get more into it, you guys, let me just go ahead and show you guys uh, the video. And so without further ado, here it is. And once we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the topic and then uh, a little bit discuss a little bit more about what's going on in different world. Yeah, here it is. Check it out. Warning, graphic content, the following images and or content may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. What if, in 1619, Africans started doing illegal slave trading, whereas they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships to America? What if, when these white slaves arrived in America, many were sold off to different plantations, never to see nor hear from their families again? What if black slave owners used white slave babies as bait to lure alligators into hunting traps? and were often eaten by them. What if, to satisfy their secret proclivities, black slave owners emasculated and humiliated their white male slaves by sodomizing them in front of their families and in public? What if, when black slave owners caught their white runaway slaves, those slaves were met with unruly punishment? What if, as a punishment for not meeting their quotas in the field, white slaves had to wash their children's hand and feet being severed from their bodies? What if, to keep white slaves divided among themselves, black slave owners kept the pale white slaves in the field and the mixed breeds could work in the house? What if George Washington was a black president who forcefully took his white slave teeth to use as his own? What if Thomas Jefferson was a black president who molested and impregnated his 14-year-old white slave with a total of six of his offspring. What if, in 1857, after a long battle, a white runaway slave by the name of Dred Scott lost his court case with the U.S. Supreme Court for his rights to freedom? What if poor white slaves have to endure deplorable treatment from black slave owners for nearly two centuries? They would not know what freedom was until two and a half years after the Civil War ended, better known as Juneteenth. What if for 32 peaceful years, 1825 to 1857, a thriving white community named Seneca Village in New York City was suddenly uprooted and destroyed for what is now known as Central Park? What if it was viewed as normal and comical for black people to dress up like white folks for amusement and profits? What if this dehumanizing factor was known as whiteface? What if, 
In the summer of 1921, a wealthy white oil rich community in Tulsa, Oklahoma was viciously massacred by an angry black mob, leaving hundreds of white people dead, thousands of their homes and businesses destroyed. What if between 1941 to 1946, a group of white American trained as air pilots aided in protecting dozens of black soldiers in multiple air combat? yet received no recognition and often faced bigotry from African Americans. What if in April 1947, Jackie Robinson was the first white baseball player to play for the major black league baseball and often faced jeers, racial slurs, and flying objects? What if in October 1954, Dorothy Dandridge was the first white woman to be nominated for an Academy Award? What if the help consisted of poor white people working for wealthy black families, wherein white housemaids nursed black babies and white male shoe shiners spent hours bent over shining black men's shoes? Not to mention, they also often faced racial hardship, were underpaid, and received no medical benefits while earning a living. What if on September 15, 1963, a black man killed four little white girls by planting a bomb at a church in Birmingham, Alabama. What if Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a famous white civil rights leader murdered by a black man on April 4, 1968 at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee? What if the Ku Klux Klan or the KKK was an American black supremacist hate group whose primary targets were white individuals what if these racist bigots often harassed, kidnapped, raped, tortured, and lynched innocent white people? What if the Jim Crow law was reversed and worked in favor of black people instead of white folks? What if in 1955, a white woman named Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a black man on a public bus and was arrested for it? What if during the 1950s and 1960s, White people started to march for their civil rights in America. What if white college students demonstrated peaceful sit-ins and still were met with brutal abuse from angry black people? What if in 1952, a white lawyer named Thurgood Marshall brought a lawsuit to the U.S. Supreme Court and two years later successfully won the right to desegregate black and white children, allowing them to attend the same school? What if on November 14, 1960, a six-year-old white girl called Ruby Ridges was the first white child to attend an all-black elementary school. What if on June 12, 1963, a white war veteran and a member of the NAACP named Medgar Evers was shot by a black Klansman in front of his wife and children? What if it took 31 years until this white man's killer was found guilty and sentenced to prison? What if a white human rights activist named Malcolm X was the subject of constant surveillance by the government? What if this constant surveillance was due to the fact that this white man was a pillar in his white community and was deemed problematic for the black man? What if during the civil rights movement, white people's voting rights were impugned, suppressed, and denied by black people? What if every time a decent white family moved into a black neighborhood, Black families moved away in fear that white folks would contaminate their ways of living. What if this was known as black flight? What if white people were purposely railroaded by black people when they tried to better their ways of living? What if the American judicial system was systemically built to keep white males in jail or prison at a much higher rate than black males? What if on March 3, 1991, a white man named Rodney King was pulled over during a traffic stop? only to be brutally beaten by four black police officers. What if these four black police officers were caught on tape beating this white man by a civilian? What if initial criminal charges were brought against these four black police officers, yet they were found innocent instead of guilty? What if Barack Obama was the first white president of the United States of America? What if, during President Obama's entire term in the White House, he was faced with vicious verbal attacks, death threats, and racial rumors of being a non-U.S. citizen? February 26, 2012, a 17-year-old white kid named Trayvon Martin was walking home from the store, but never made it home. 
because he was shot and killed by a person who racially profiled him. What if this black man who disobeyed orders not to follow Trayvon after he racially profiled him, yet was still found not guilty for his death? What if Tamir Rice was a 12-year-old white boy playing with a pellet gun and was killed by a black policeman? What if Eric Garner was a white man who died after a black NYPD officer put him in a bed and choke hold? What if it took five years for the black police officer who caused Eric's death to be terminated from the New York Police Department? What if Freddie Gray was a white male handcuffed and thrown into the back of a police van without being told what he was charged for until after he was arrested? What if Alton Stern was a 37-year-old white man shot dead at point blank rage by two black officers? What if a white male named Ahmaud Arbery was out for a jog in his neighborhood when he was wrongfully accused of death, harassed, and killed by three black men? What if on March 13, 2020, a 26-year-old white woman named Breonna Taylor was killed when Louisville police broke down her door and ultimately shot her multiple times? What if the officers involved were black and faced no charges for her unnecessary death? What if on May 25, 2020, a white man named George Floyd died after a black police officer held his knee on the back of his neck for 8 minutes and 46 seconds? What if two innocent white protesters were fatally shot by a 17-year-old black kid who felt entitled to defend his country with an AR-15 rifle? What if there was an organization of black people condoning his deadly actions? What if, in frustration of all the injustice white people faced in America, they formed a movement called White Lives Matter? What if the White Lives Matter movement was often dismissed and mocked by black people? What if there was a term called black privileges, a concept where societal privileges benefited black people over white people in America under the same social, political, and economic circumstances? What if a Karen was a black woman? A Karen is a trajectory slang for a obnoxious, angry, entitled, and often racist middle-aged black woman who uses her privilege to get her way or police other people's behavior, specifically white people. What if, in a place called America, black police officers who shot and killed unarmed white people faced none or were acquitted of all criminal charges? What if the United States of America had a black police What if those police officers were held accountable for their quick action of killing innocent, unarmed citizens in America? What if close-minded people finally acknowledged that racism still existed in America and attempted to rectify the situation? What if hate groups such as the Ku Klux Klan and alt-right were denounced and banned in the United States of America? What if the Confederate flag and all statues of the Confederate leaders were banned and removed in all 50 states of America? What if those four presidents called into Mount Rushmore were replaced with the real original founding fathers of America? What if black people were finally given reparations for centuries of injustice and racial hardships they faced in America? What if racial profiling didn't exist in America? I wonder how many black people would still be alive today if biased people didn't racially profile them. What if close-minded white people one day sat down with black people and had an open conversation about ways to acknowledge and overcome adversities of systemic racism in America? What if all lives can't matter until the racist people of America acknowledges that a black person's life matters just as much as theirs? What if someday colorblinded, aka closed minded white people came together with open minded black people and worked on ways to combat systemic racism in America and bring forth systemic change? These changes may never come to pass during these times, but what if this was the generation that plants the seed for the next? What if it was because of our generation the next generation to see systemic change? instead of systemic racism. Hmm. What if? What if? A controversial paradigm shift. Available now at differenceworld.net. That's D-I-F-E-R-N-T-S 
Well.net. Parental discretion is fully advised. All right, guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching um, my uh, illustrations and as well as my voiceover. I did this last year, so. <laughs> um, but it's a, a, a curated or a mesh of uh, my videos. And again, it's just intelling, you know, historical and political and precedent uh, facts that have happened and, and uh, deaths and historical events that have occurred in the African-American community. And the only difference is I'm just... Re reverse the roles, you know, it's basically, you know, the historical events, what if, you know, like for instance, in 1619, Africans started the dealing in slave trading, whereas they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and bought them in slave ship. And as you guys see in the illustrations showing you the white slaves and chains and shackles, you know, basically how we were, you know, black people were when we came to America. And again, it's understandable that, you know, this topic does, you know, ruffle some people if it makes you uncomfortable. Um, it will piss people off, more so a lot of white people. Um, but the, the main gist of you guys are those that made it to hypothetical and seen, you know, the illustrations of, you know, what I was talking about in regards to coming together, you know, unity, taking, you know, accountability and acknowledgement, you know, coming to that round table and having these conversations that need to be had. And, and that, in my opinion, when we have these conversations, you know, consistently over time, that is where we can see systemic change. Now, granted, nothing happens overnight, of course, and it, it takes more than one person, you know, bitching and moaning. And so it's going to take, you know, a collective, you know, of people coming together to make one loud voice to be heard. And so uh, this is my hope and prayer with this book, be me doing my part. The inspiration or how it all started, it started during the pandemic, um, being stuck in a house, depressed, having nothing to do. And then, you know, boom, May 25th, George Floyd, you know, he died. And he's from Third Ward. I'm from Fifth Ward, two neighborhoods in Houston. You know, I wanted to march and be in his protest and be heard. However, I wanted my voice to be heard longer in the moment of time or just that moment of time. I wanted it to be heard long after I'm gone. And so this is what I came up with, and, you know, and it is, you know, the way that I've set it up definitely meant to get your attention and then having these conversations I need to have. And so if you guys like what I'm talking about in regards to, you know, injustice and systemic racism, as well as, you know, being it's Black History Month and spreading social awareness about the issue, definitely you can show me by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing, of course, to my YouTube channel, you guys. I would definitely appreciate uh, all the love and support, especially every little click I get, I am grateful for it. And so please, please keep it coming. Also, you guys, don't forget, you can go to my website, differenceworld.net, and check out all my other social media handles, my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, my TikTok now. I'm on TikTok, you guys. Uh, I, I said Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook anymore. Correction. Sorry about that. Just <laughs> old habits. Um, but I'm on Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter, and YouTube, of course. So definitely check me out there as well as you can book me for any type of motivational speaking events you would like for me to be a part of. You just go to my website and book me. I am free of charge as of now. Uh, and so what we just talked about with the vlog, you guys, it should be popping up because I do this every time. But um, make sure you guys, again, go to my website and get my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. It is available now for purchase. And being that it is Black History Month, this will be a great time to, you know, get this copy, a copy of the book and start having these conversations that need to be had. So, again, go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy of my book. What if a controversial paradigm shift? I greatly appreciate all the support and love that I am getting. Um, moving on now, uh, what else we got going on in Difference World? Tomorrow's Wednesday, and so I may or may not be dropping a podcast interview. We'll see. Just got to play by ear. That's why you guys got to hit that notification bell and learn why what's going on in Difference World. You come and learn. Um, but stay tuned for that, you guys. It's, it's, it's always something I'm posting, so that's, again, why you got to hit that notification bell. But um, in any case, let's move on to our mental health check. Even though we do this at, uh, towards the end of our uh, segment, it's very important. 
uh, especially in Third Eye Entertainment, we strive to, you know, bring social awareness in regards to mental health wellness. And so, uh, again, especially being Black History Month, definitely want to push and advocate for Black mental health wellness, making sure all my people out there are doing what they have to do to keep their mental health in check. And, you know, bumping that notion that Black people don't do therapy, or we don't talk about our issues, we don't do that today, <laughs> okay? And so, uh, definitely, Black, white, purple, green, yellow, anybody out there, you know, no matter the skin color, if you're going through any type of mental anguish, mental stress, mental illness, please know that it is okay to not be okay, but do not sit there and not be okay. Go do what you have to do, man. Get help any way that you can. Talking with somebody about it, picking up a hobby, even getting on medica medications if you need to. You know, bending broken bridges or, or cutting people off that mean you no harm. Do whatever it is that you have to do that keeps you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or 741-741. For those that would prefer to go online, you can visit mentalhealthishealth.us or 988lifeline.org. Or for those that are outside of the U.S. and that's watching your girl in different countries, you can check out encounseling.com. Again, that is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G. -E you guys, let me make it. Okay. Uh, as well as, don't forget you guys, although I am giving you these resources, it is on you to do your own homework and find what works best for you because you are the captain of your own ship and you decide whether to nav where to navigate the waters. Lastly, you guys, do not forget that whatever you are going through, you are not alone in this fight and the struggle and battle and you will get through this because this too shall pass. So you just hold on and keep fighting the good fight and I'm with you in spirit, okay? So in close out of that, moving on, um, again, you guys, I hope you enjoy listening to and watching uh, my video uh, of um, basically what if a controversial paradigm ship. Um, if you guys, again, like the video, definitely show me by subscribing or liking uh, my YouTube channel. I, I appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. And as far as it goes to those out there, you know, that's going for your goals like I am and trying to reach your dreams like, like me, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And then it will surely come to you guys. Different world. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if, in 1619, Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author different. Go to differenceworld.net.